Looking back almost a decade later, it's really hard to say what regular show exactly was. The show at the start was a barrage of insane scenarios, often striking at monotonous times, hence the irony of the name regular show. And in the beginning it seemed the show's supporting cast, whether it was Benson or Margaret, served as plot devices in the lives of the two main characters, Mordecai and Rigby. But as the show went on, we saw a shift in that entire format. It was no longer just about Mordecai and Rigby slacking off, but instead it became an ensemble series about the family that these park co became, and the adventures they went on together. It's really kind of sweet if you think about it. Not only did the characters' dynamics shift, but it became more plot-heavy and even more complicated story-wise as the show went on. Throughout its many season run, regular show basically built up an entire lore. It's crazy. And that complicated plot gave way for even more complicated twists. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. Because this show managed to have plenty of twists and turns throughout its eight season run, including a movie. From Russian spies to the entire fourth wall of the show being broken, here are the best regular show plot twists. Thomas is a Russian spy. Seeing as this list is in no particular order, let's look at one of the biggest bombshell twists the series had to offer, the character of Thomas the Intern. Originally added as a way for the show to convey that Mordecai and Rigby were climbing the corporate ladder, so to speak, along with the writers all having shared internship experiences, Thomas the Intern first joined the park after a massive regular show special, Exit 9B. His role was minimal at first, usually serving as a punching bag for the others, as he was the smallest in the park food chain, which honestly is all too common for an internship position. But with enough time, he soon became an integral part of the park's operations, showing up in many episodes and just becoming a main character. Which is why this twist was so shocking. See, Thomas wasn't always even meant to be a spy, that was something that was decided later. Which means this twist has pretty much no grounds other than the fact that regular show is crazy and they wanted to make him a Russian spy. And I'm glad they did it, because this turned out to be one of the weirdest and most entertaining plot points the show could have possibly given us. It all began when Rigby noticed strange things happening with Thomas. Like like him literally fighting in a ninja suit at night, which, yeah, that's a little suspicious. I don't think he's cosplaying out there. He tries to tell the crew the next morning, but literally nobody believes him, which honestly, why would they? Especially since every attempt to expose him only makes Thomas look more normal, like the incident with the laundry bag. But eventually the cover is blown, and they catch on, when a literal CIA agent falls out of their cupboard. I don't know what Thomas's plan was here. I've never stuffed a person in a cupboard. I've never tried to hide a person either. I definitely would not start with the cupboard. This has been it all shit and the once timid intern, Thomas, is revealed to be Nicholas, a Russian spy. Honestly, it sounds like a regular show fan fiction, but in the best way. If you haven't seen the special, you need to. It gets absolutely over the top in a way that only regular show does. At one point, we see the president of both the US and Russia, a UN conference, and a final confrontation between Nicholas and the park crew over how legitimately bad they treated him as an intern. Russian spy escapades aside, this is kind of a moment that we've been building up to for a while, so it was really cathartic to see Thomas or Nicholas finally be able to air his grievances. The episode ends with the park getting saved just in time, and this is where we get Thomas's final moments in the show. Benson offers him a full-time job, but unfortunately, the intern turned international criminal is forced to go on the run, and he can't take the job position. In this economy, I feel for him. He literally runs off into the sunset, and that's the last we see of Thomas, or should I say Nicholas? Well, not really. I mean, he pops up in cameos a few more times, but you know what I mean. This was his exit from the show as a main character, and a main character he was. It's it's honestly pretty ballsy of them to just write him out of the main cast after adding him naturally over time. Still, this twist is beyond unexpected, it's just plain goofy, honestly. Despite that though, I would say that it works, it's definitely entertaining. Of course, only in regular show would the timid intern really be an international Russian spy, that's just too perfect. Also, side note, way too many global events happen in this specific park, I swear to god. Hey Benson, could you tell me how the park electrical grid works again? Sure. Uh, could you talk into the pepperoni? The first thing you gotta know about the return of the capicola gang i don't even know where to begin with this twist first and foremost this was peak margaret and mordecai arc love it or hate it their will they won't they relationship was a huge part of the show and that's why this episode is especially hard to watch as it all takes place during a fancy date between the two sure it's the classic sitcom trope of big event happening while the character is supposed to be on a date oh no how is he gonna balance them both but it totally works the big event in question is a deal between mordecai and a shifty counterfeiter orchestrated by the literal FBI, because of course it is. But it turns out it wasn't just some anonymous counterfeiter, it was in fact the old fun zone animatronic from the Capicola gang. Thought to be dead, it turns out he's still alive and more terrifying than ever. In fact, he hatched this whole counterfeiting scheme to literally lure the park gang back and enact his revenge, because of course 
he would. This is the best twist, I feel, because it was legitimately so unexpected. The Capicola gang animatronics were such minor one-off villains. Sure, they were from a crazy episode, one of my favorites, in fact, just because of the fact that there was a literal shootout between the two. And the fact that these were the specific villains they decided to bring back for a part two is so crazy in the best way. It also reiterates just how unexpected regular show can be. It really keeps you on your toes. You never know which one of its weird villains they're going to bring back or how. This being the season finale also made it even better. Plus, this episode had actual guns in it. Like, they really did that. I just would love to hear the writer's room conversation where they're like, what if we bring back the animatronic gangster? We simply could not resist leaving it off this list. School is overrated! I didn't go to school and look at me! Nobody talks that way about college education in my restaurant. Pops is the chosen one. Look, Pops is the most lovable and iconic regular show character. I don't care what you say or think, it's true. He's almost the mascot of the show he's so recognizable, and his voice is beyond iconic. <laughs> I adore rock, paper, scissors. Although, where I come from, we call it quartz parchment shears. You either have or know somebody who's tried to do a Pops impression at some point in your life. It's undeniable. I would do one right now, but I have self-respect and I'm scared of the comment section. And kudos to Regular Show because they developed him from the weird old guy to the adopted son of Mr. Mallard and eventually the literal chosen one, embodiment of all good. You gotta love this show. Of course, this all happened during Regular Show's insane final season, an epic space send-off that had plenty of twists and turns in its own right, then being launched into space is arguably a twist of its own, but the biggest twist of the season had to be Pops' character being the literal chosen embodiment of everything good. But as much as this was a crazy twist, it also makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's literally Pops. He literally says jolly good show. It doesn't get any better than that in terms of good. Now, Pops was already going through a weird situation with anti-Pops, but in the second to last episode, we learned the truth about who Pops really is. His real name is not Pops. It's Mega Cranus, which is as weird as it sounds. <laughs> Mega Cranus. Pops is the quote, ultimate creation of the universe. A creation so perfect that when he was created, the universe was forced to balance itself out, hence anti-Pops. It's a whole good versus evil situation. Keep in mind this lore was all delivered by the other failed iterations of Pops. I swear this is Pops from that pilot video that JG Quintel did, but I can't confirm it. That's when it's revealed that the entire park gang were predestined to take part in an epic fight of good versus evil, with Pops and anti-Pops at the center. It turns out they fought countless times before going back billions of years. This news changes Pop's entire character and is sadly the beginning of the tragic end. Despite the park gang trying their best, Pop ends it once and for all by sacrificing them both. And this is the part where it's okay to cry. I definitely do. Look, Regular Show is all about taking regular things and blowing them into dramatic proportions. And that's exactly what they did with Pops. A goofy eccentric old man turns out to be the literal physic embodiment of all good in the world and the universe's most perfect creation. Plus, it created a pretty solid final battle storyline for the entire show. As one off as Regular Show was, this was pretty much the best way to put a tight little narrative bow on the entire show, and it made it really seem like the show was building up to something. In this case, one final battle, good versus evil. But if you were to say you saw this coming from season one, you're definitely lying. I know you're sad, but I promise this is a happy ending. Take care of each other. Goodbye. Rigby forges Mordecai's college rejection letter. This is one of the saddest twists in the series, as it ultimately shows us that the entire show is built on a lie. This all happens in the regular show movie, which if you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth a watch, in which Mordecai and Rigby's relationship and friendship was at the center focus of the film. And what way to showcase their early relationship then with time travel, which is basically the main plot device of the film. I'm glad they did it this way because it lets us look at the origin of Mordecai and Rigby and even their sad future. The whole thing kicks off when Rigby comes from the future so that they can make sure it never happens by changing the past. It's a whole thing, time travel is confusing, but the big twist is revealed near the end of the movie. That twist being basically the whole reason that Mordecai and Rigby are working their dead end park job is because they didn't go to college, because neither of them got in. But that's not the case as it turns out. We found out that Mordecai did in fact get into college, something he never got to know because Rigby interfered with his interest letter after discovering that he himself didn't get in. He basically 
basically lied to Mordecai and tricked him into thinking he wasn't accepted. Their entire relationship, the focus of the entire show, this park job, is built on a lie, on Rigby ruining the future of his best friend. It's hard to have a bigger twist than that, honestly. This is extra sad because it taints all the adventures the two had over the years. Now we know that this wasn't Mordecai's set path, but instead, he was thrown off his path in life, all because his best friend was being selfish and scared of them growing apart. Not to mention the fact that Rigby looks legitimately horrible. This is pretty irredeemable for him. I mean, there's white lies and then there's destroying your friend's entire future. They eventually patch it up and Rigby even gets redeemed, but this is still a revelation that changes the entire fabric of the show and a twist that I did not see coming. You're not my friend. All you've ever done is hold me back and I'm the idiot for not seeing it until now. Regular show is canonically a TV show. Who doesn't love a good fourth wall break? And leave it to regular show to give us one of the biggest canonical fourth wall revelations in cartoon history. Like the Pops revelation, this came from the very end of the show in its crazy final season, and I'm honestly not surprised they went with this route. Regular show has dipped its toes in media wear comedy throughout its entire run. From early episodes about traveling into internet videos, to later seasons having physical embodiments of VHS and DVD, regular show has always been aware of the fact that it is a show. It's a piece of media. And and in the last season, they really doubled down, introducing the character, The Seer. The Seer is basically a way for regular show to vent about its experiences as a show, as well as the team behind it to be transparent with the audience. The Seer is a godlike figure that watches, quote, universes, which is the show's allegory for TV shows, pretty much. This exposes the fact that their whole lives at the park were basically a show someone, The Seer, was watching. And The Seer is honestly a hilarious satire for the actual television industry, from the shows she chooses to watch to her obsession with ratings and age demographics. In the episode where this is all explained, Meet the Seer, we even get a recap of the entire series through the fans' eyes, as it's revealed that the Seer was watching the entire time. They poke fun of themselves and basically say everything the fans were saying throughout its run, even going for touchy subjects like the general consensus that the show dipped a little when it became censored on Mordecai's love life. Even though this is a twist, I feel like it's less of a big dramatic twist and more of an incredibly honest message from the show itself, which is refreshing that the crew can do that. They're incredibly self-aware and I love it. But it can't be under stated that this was a huge twist for the show. It didn't just break the fourth wall, it actually obliterated it in a way that only regular show can. You don't know me! Oh, muscle man. Always so brash. You know who else is always so brash? I don't know what you're talking about, lady. My mom. Whoa, bro. And finally, the last twist of the series, regular show is a VHS tape Pops is watching from heaven. We already watched one weird godlike figure watching regular show, why not throw one more instance of that in at the very end? This twist comes at the end of the series, like the very end, the last shot of the show. That being said, there's really not too much to it, so let's do a quick recap. Pops tragically dies in the final battle of the show between good and evil. Yes, I cried, you probably did too, I hope, unless you're a sociopath. We watch the characters live out their lives growing up, which is super cathartic as a viewer. And finally, the last scene shows a much older Mordecai and Rigby reflecting on their youth on the same park stairs they sat at so many times before. This is such a perfect period to end the show on, but it doesn't stop there. They throw one last twist at us. The absolute very last shot of the film reveals that everything we had seen was being watched by Angel Pops in heaven. He was watching over them all as they lived their lives. And then, in the final moment, the show itself pops out on a VHS tape. This raises so many questions. Is that a VHS tape in the theme song? I really think that noise is a VHS tape, that would be perfect. Was it all a VHS tape? I don't think you could fit all of this on one VHS tape. Okay, I'm being goofy, but ultimately, I feel like this was just a perfect visual model to end the show on. Regular show's DNA is already so heavily rooted in 80s technology, whether it be old video games or VHS tapes themselves, not to mention the fact that the show literally broke the fourth wall a few episodes earlier and revealed that it was basically a show. Pops was watching their lives just like we've been watching the whole time, and the VHS popped out because, well, the show's over. This is a cool twist, but if you think about it, it's just a beautiful way to end the series. We've been watching the park all these years, and now the tape is finally finished. There's no story left. And personally, I feel like this is the best way they could have ended it. But still, watching it the first time, I undeniably was like, what? 
Whoa! But I don't know, maybe that's just me. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are our picks for the best regular show plot twists. As always with stuff like this, I really want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with the picks on this list? Do you think there are others we missed? Let us know in those comments down below or tweet to us at Roundtable Vids or me at Stretcher Nemo. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more incredible cartoon content. As always, guys, I'm Nemo. This is Regular Show List, and I will see you next time. Peace.